All right, so you already had to listen to me once today. By the way, is the translation working? Not if it's working. Is the translation, yes, thank you. Um, okay, you already had to listen to me once today. And some of the things that I'm going to talk about are similar to what I said in, in the, my keynote this morning. But I wanted to go into more detail and actually wanted to talk about some companies and how they use, how they're doing this optimization of uh, their mobile applications, how, how they're using these different technologies to be successful with their mobile technologies or, or with their mobile apps. So I wanted to remind you again a little bit of the challenges that we face. So the first challenge, or, or for, rather this is what we're looking for. We're looking for this Starwood experience where you're transforming your business through mobile. And if you remember from that video, and the video was a little bit, um, well, I was going to say it's futuristic, but really it's not. It showed someone opening their door with their phone or with their watch. It showed um, this different experience based on their preferences. These sorts of things are happening right now. That's what we're trying to, that's what we're trying to get to. The problem, Oh, these are, these are not the new slides. So we are going to get a different presentation than I expected to give you. Um, the problem, as I mentioned this morning, is we're spending lots and lots of money to drive users to apps that may not yet have a great experience. And um, so, if you look at this, three billion U.S. dollars spent, roughly 30 to 40 percent of all mobile advertising is spent just trying to get you and, and I to download apps. And once we get there, again, just reminding of, of things that I said earlier today, once we get there, and any, by the way, anyone, if you're taking pictures of the, of the slides, if you email me, I'm happy to give you the slides. So, I mean, you can take pictures, it's no problem, but I'll give you the actual slides if you want, um, so that that might be a little bit better. Um, but the cost of acquisition, so I said it's $3 billion today, that, the cost keeps going up. So this year I said it's roughly 2,000 Korean won per install. Well, last year it was 50% less than that, and next year it will be 50% more. The cost keeps going up. The good news is that we're using more and more of the right technologies. 82%, nearly 80% of marketing professionals now use analytics to analyze what their users are doing in their apps. So if you're not using analytics today of some kind, you should. That's, that's kind of the baseline of what is expected, what's needed t today. Um, and if you look at it, the, w the way people are doing it, it's usually on a weekly basis, uh, and they're just trying to measure general engagement um, in the app. And again, the fact that I said that it's on a weekly basis is not a great sign. It means that we're not actively, in real time, checking to see, are we actually connecting with our, with our users, with our customers? Most, most companies, most brands, most apps are not. And I think that's a mistake. And then we look at, well, so how are people driving engagement? And usually in-app messages or push messages are the primary model or the primary means that we do that. And you look at this and you say, well, 50%, half of us, are, are using these tools, and that's pretty good. Except that it's, it's not very good, um, because what most companies are doing with, with in-app messages and push messages are basically just uh, on triggers, like, let's say, I go within two miles of Sejong University, send me a message saying, hey, please come to the Adobe, the Adobe um, forum. 
those sorts of triggers aren't really personalized. They're not, they're not optimized for me. They just happen to know where I, where I am at a given point in time. Or maybe they're saying, let's create a segment of everyone who, who watched Game of Thrones last week. Let's send them a message saying, hey, why don't you watch... Um, my daughter said that her favorite Korean drama is uh, Secret Garden. So let's say, let's actually change that and say, for everyone who watched Secret Garden last week, we're, we want to create a look-alike um, segment, and we want to find people who want to watch uh, Boys Over Flowers and send them a message. Well, that's, that's okay. It's... it's, it's uh, it's a good step, but really we want something personalized for you, or for him, or for not just clustering us into a group, but based on real-time analysis of data, making an offer, or connecting with you, engaging with you, or, or, or me, right at that moment. That's where we need to be going. But when we see this number up here of 50%, of companies using push messaging and in-app messaging, we're using them for really basic purposes and not nearly as effectively as we should. So again, the panic. The panic is, and that is very bright, the panic is that our customers expect a fantastic experience, but generally speaking, we aren't giving it to them. We're giving them kind of a mediocre experience. So again, reminding, so, so what do we need to do? Don't panic, build on a platform that enables iteration. And that iteration is everything from acquiring, developing the app to acquiring the user to, um, to analyzing what the user does to engaging with them and, and constantly experimenting, iterating as we go. And the reason I'm showing this, we're going to focus in on these, on these things, acquire, analyze, engage. When you go back and you're thinking about how do I work with my customers, how do I, how do I optimize my app, these are the steps that every company should be looking at. Acquire users, analyze what they're doing, and engage with them, and then repeat. Just keep doing it over and over again. And, oh, and by the way, I should, I should mention, Central to these things is location data, where they are. Because think about it, one of the big differences with mobile, maybe the main difference with mobile versus, say, what I do on, on the internet, on the web, is I carry my mobile device everywhere. And so the mobile device tells you as a, as a brand, tells you as a company, where your customers go and, you, and say, well, that's interesting, but does it matter? Of course it matters, because where we go is a really good indicator of who we are. If I go to see an Arsenal soccer match, and I do whenever I can, that tells the brand something about me as a person. Or think about it this way. If I want to find the best time, if I'm HBO, and I want to find the best time to reach out to my customer, and tell them about a new show that I think they might be interested in, wouldn't it be better to tell them when they're a half hour, 30 minutes from their home versus when they're on their way to work? And with the location data, I, I, with respect for private, privacy, but with that location data, we can tell not only a lot about a person, but the right moment to, to tell them something. And I'm gonna, we're going to show a demo in a few minutes that it walks through exactly how to do this effectively. And then finally, um, also important in all this is consumer profile. Understanding the user across not only who they are and what they do on their mobile device, but who they are and what they do on their laptop, on their, on their um, tablet, when they're in the store, offline, but happen to be buying something at a, at a local store. Maybe they're at Tom and Tom's coffee shop, which I saw today for the first time. Um, to being able to take offline data 
or third-party data and marry it with their, um, with their mobile app data, these sorts of things make it really powerful and make it possible to provide that optimized, personalized experience. So, again, the steps, acquire, and by acquire I mean a lot of it comes down to advertising or using paid or owned media and figuring out this person downloaded my app, but where do they come from? Which, which of my advertising dollars, or one, um, are effective? The second is, is analyzing what they do, and it's not just analyzing, um, it's not just analyzing behavior in the app, but it's also app store analytics to see how your app is performing in, in, the, in, the, in your app store. Um, and performance analytics. If on performance analytics, think about it, if you have a shopping cart, you notice in your app that conversions, purchases are down 20%, but you don't know if that's because the shopping cart is slow. You don't know if that's because people just don't want to buy. And so performance analytics, application performance analytics will tell how successful, how well your app is running, which has a big impact on users. To finally to engage, and again, th these are sending the right message at the right time in the right place. And actually, so I'm going to have Mark, my colleague, come up here and help by showing how all these things work in the real world. Thank you. Do you need this? Two. Hello, testing, one, two. Is that okay? All right, good. Good afternoon, pleasure for me to be here. What we'd like to do is share with you um, in the theme that you've heard today about consistent and continuous experiences. Some of our forward-looking customers are thinking about this in a way that involves not only the digital aspect of experiences, but physical aspects. And we'd like to share with you an example of, uh, that is in proof of concept stage. So this is not quite shipping yet, but we want to help you get thinking about continuous and consistent. This is a, a large American retailer that sells uh, home hardware. And they are looking to engage their customers who are in store with digital experiences, putting the two together. And it's done with the help of technology like this. This is an iBeacon. A couple of dollars each, and you could put them in a retail store very inexpensively and help communicate with the mobile app for the user to provide them an experience, a digital experience, even though they're in a physical store. And let me show you how this is working uh, today in a proof of concept with this customer. So imagine that I am the manager of one of the stores in a large metropolitan area. I'm not a technical person, I'm a store manager. But I want to engage my customers who are visiting me today. I want to engage with my customers who are visiting right now. Why? Because in this home renovation store, I have a seminar that's going to happen in 20 minutes at the front of the store. I want to engage those users to come to this seminar. So let me show you how we can do this with the help of mobile services, analytics, and off-the-shelf devices such as iBeacons. So I come into the Adobe Marketing Cloud's mobile services section for my store, and I choose my store. Again, I'm not a technical person. I need things to be click, drag, drop. That's it. I see a map of my store. Every letter that is here represents a beacon that has been strategically placed in the different departments for this store. I can click at any time and see how many people have come into my store, the entrance, Beacon A, today. Furthermore, for the users who have installed the app and have authenticated, we can now merge data that we know about those users, 
Meaning that if you look at the color codes, green, purple, and pink, you can see how many people came in today that are professional contractors, homeowners, or tradesmen, because they've chosen to share their information as frequent customers. As the store manager, what I want to do today is focus on the home owner market for this seminar. The seminar is about bathroom renovations. So I'm looking right now just at the purple segment, just at the homeowners, and I'm going to click on the bath department and see how many people today have visited. 278. That's a lot of people. Not too much for my seminar, but that's okay. Some of them have gone, right? The other important thing with these beacons, when they first came out, if you simply just walked by them, they would go off and they would annoy people, right? So we've come up with a new metric that we call dwell time. How much time does someone spend close to here? These beacons can be a set to ping the app every few seconds, every minute, you can adjust it. So by understanding the dwell time, in other words, that some people here spent over five minutes in this part of my store, I can make, I think, the correct assumption that they're targeted for that bathroom renovation seminar I'm going to have in 20 minutes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select those people who meet that criteria and by clicking on the little airplane icon, I'm going to add them to my segment. But when you're renovating a bathroom, you also need a, a lot of other things and to help with that renovation, like faucets, plumbing items, mirrors, right? So wouldn't it be wonderful if I was able to not only target the people who visited the bath area, but see where they went. Maybe they went to another area that is complementary to a complete bathroom renovation. And this is where our engineers at Adobe have come up with this amazing way to match the patterns between beacons and actually identify the path that people have engaged in. So I can see here that many, many people went from the bathroom section to the kitchen and appliance area where we keep the faucets. So how many is that? 280 that spent at least three minutes in this area. So that's wonderful information and I'm going to add them to the segment as well. So now, without again being a very technical person, I've identified 189 people that are still in a store right now that meet this criteria. I've created this segment on the fly. And this allows me to then create a message for them, like you saw this morning, with a push that lets them know that there's going to be a renovation, a bathroom renovation seminar in 20 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And I want to show you what that looks like. Go over to my phone. So now I'm changing roles. I am now a visitor at the store and I meet the criteria. I've either spent at least five minutes in the bathroom area or spent three minutes in the faucets and plumbing area. So as I fire up the application and log in, I should get this invitation. There it is, right? Inviting me to come to the seminar at the front of the store in 20 minutes. This is a perfect example of being continuous and consistent with an experience that crosses the divide between the digital and the physical world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. All right. So one thing that you don't see when Mark gets up there, Mark makes everything look so easy. Underneath all of that simplicity of experience is 
is this, is a single SDK that you put in the app that makes it really easy to get all these disparate services brought together into one place. Not with the retailer, the fictional retailer that Mark was talking about, but with another large retailer in the US. I had a conversation with them and I asked, what are, what are your mobile challenges? And they do about two billion US dollars through, um, through mobile web and, and their app. And they said, you know, one of the biggest problems for us is that for application performance, we go to this vendor. For, um, for location services, we go to this other vendor. And they basically, to get all these different services, they have a dozen um, different, different SDKs. And that impacts performance, makes for bad performance, makes for a bad, ultimately a bad user experience. And so they spend a lot of time combining all those. One thing that they've been very happy about is this Adobe's approach of giving a single SDK, either through technology that we provide or through partner technology, bringing it all together to make it easy. But let's, let's now talk about, so Mark gave an example of what this looks like or what it can look like for a customer. I'm gonna talk about a few real customers and how they do these things. And because these slides are no longer in the order um, or that I thought they were, I'm gonna, I'm gonna click around. So Redbox is, I, think, I'm, I don't think that they operate in Asia Pacific. I do think that they're mostly in the US and Canada. But they basically, you go to a store, and outside the store is a little kiosk, and they have 40,000 of these kiosks. And within these kiosks, you, get game, you can get games, DVDs, or, or other things like, like that. And Redbox had a few problems. They, or rather, they had a few questions that they were trying to solve, or that they were trying to answer. One of those was, how can we serve up offers to our, to our users when they're nearby? Another was, how can we improve downloads of our app? And, and then they had a number of others. So, and we'll, and we'll walk through some of them. So, they started running a series of A-B tests. And if you're not familiar with A-B tests, you should become familiar with them as soon as possible because this is, this is one way that we can optimize the, a user's experience. And so they ran, a few, they ran a few tests. They were trying to see would a responsive website be the right way to go or should they just build what we call an MDOT website or a mobile, a, they go out and build a dedicated mobile website. What they found, and they, and they ran a series of tests, what they found is that the responsive website drove 11% um, improvements and a 7% increase in their conversion rate. So again, A-B tests, they'll provide, we're going to build an MDOT site see, and, and steer people, a certain percentage of people to that. We're going to build a responsive website and steer a certain percentage of people to that, and we'll see which performs better. It's an A-B test. And actually, with Adobe Target, you can do multivariate testing, which means you can do more than just an A-B test. You can do a C, a D, an E, um, and so on. Other things that they did is they were trying to see, um, we want to see how well our push notifications do. And to figure this out, again, ran, they ran a series of A-B tests to try to figure out what message would resonate with people. And uh, you, can see the, you can see the stats up there. The main thing is that their app user base increased by 100%. One other thing that I should say along um, in this is that one of the things that they discovered is what time of day would be the best time to reach out to their customers. So again, th through these automated A-B tests, they tried different times of day to reach out to people and, and figured out that 9 a.m. was the best time. Again, I don't know why 9 a.m. would be the best time, 
because, again, this is people coming by, stopping by a kiosk to pick up a DVD or, or um, an Xbox game or, or, or a PlayStation game or something to that effect. But 9 a.m. was the right time for them. Maybe not intuitive, and this is part of the magic of, of working with lots of data and working with A-B tests and this targeting technology is what you guess is the right answer as to what your customer would want might not be right. And so it's so important to run these tests to maybe have your, get, your best guess as to when we should send these messages, but then let the data tell you whether you're right or wrong and to run the test to, to prove it out. What they found, again, was 9 a.m. was the best time. The one... Um, one additional thing that they discovered, they did, they did all sorts of things. Apple, or, um, Redbox did all sorts of things. They also, like, on the download page, in, within their ads, to try to nudge their users toward downloading the app, they ran all sorts of tests to see what would work best there. They were, and then they provided other things outside of the A-B testing, um, locations. So they could tell when you're near one of their red box locations and you might get a message saying, hey, stop by and get a video. These sorts of things, just constantly iterating and experimenting and the results have been really, really, really positive. Another one that, uh, kind of going again to the counterintuitiveness of, of sometimes of data. Ancestry is, if you've ever done family history, um, trying to see like where your ancestors came from, Ancestry.com is the number one provider of, of these services. And they were trying to figure out whether uh, an in-app purchase, um, sorry, they were trying to figure out the optimal way for people to pay for for their services, whether, whether they should push a message to them saying to do an in-app purchase or whether a subscription offering would be better. And again, you think, well, surely you're just, you're just going to choose and, and go one way or the other. But they set up a, a series of A-B tests to find out what would be the best way to get their customers to pay. And you think about with, um, are there any, I'm sure there are some media companies in here um, with trying to figure out how can, we, how can we convince people of the value of our, of our services, of our content. Sometimes you don't know, you just have to run the tests to see. Another one, and this one's a, a favorite of mine, Argos is a UK retailer. So they only operate in, in England um, and throughout the United Kingdom. Um, they've done some just incredible things. Everything from, they, they now have it, um, and this is not through A-B testing, but this is just through location targeting. They can tell if you've come to their store and if you're starting to walk toward one of their competitors. And then they, then if you start to walk toward a Curry's, which is one of their competitors, you'll get a message saying, hey, come on back, 10% off. Um, doing really interesting things like that. Most recently, they've been running a series of tests using Adobe Analytics and Adobe um, Target to geofence an area, let's say the county of Kent, and say, we want to know, or we want to send an offer to everyone within the county of Kent, and they're be able to do that by looking at the location of your, of your device and say, every Argos customer or anyone who is in our system and they bring in the, the CRM data, um, we would like to send them an offer to, to get free shipping at a certain weekend in November. They're going to be do, running, this, uh, running this test Everyone within that geographic location who's been a past customer, we're going to give you, uh, send you this offer for free shipping. And you think about all these sorts of things, but again, it's this constant testing, in this case, location targeting, 
And then they're going to be doing a series of tests, A-B tests, in the region to see which, which works best. Is it free shipping that's the best thing? Is it 10% off that works best? Um, and doing a range of things like that. And I'm actually, I'm actually going to stop here. Um, and I just wanted to ask if there are any questions. Because I, th I think all day long we've been talking about all the great things that you can do. But one thing that I would love to hear, and you can ask your question in Korean. Somebody will translate it. Um, what are some of the challenges that you have with your mobile apps? Or what are some of the challenges that your companies are trying to solve? Um, and hopefully somebody will be brave and, and ask a question. Because um, I, would, I would love to hear what the main problems that you have are. Anyone, anyone want to volunteer a question? Sir. Can, do we have a microphone, by the way? Sorry, I should have warned you that I was going to do this. But you can yell your question. Yell it in, yell it in Korean and somebody translate it for me. <laughs> Go ahead, ask, ask your question. In Korean. Hey, I asked for it. Yeah. Ah, thank you. Translation is on its way. Yeah, 말해 됩니까? Yeah, 많은 그 한국 제가 제가 알기로 많은 사람들이 블루투스 기능을 많이 사용하지 않는 걸 알고 있습니다. 지금 강의 중에 비컨이나 지금 지오펜스 기능 등에 대해서 설명을 하셨는데 그건 많은 사람들이 블루투스 기능을 사용하고 있다는 전제 하에서 지금 설명을 하신 것 같습니다. 근데 어떻게 하면 그 사람들한테 그 블루투스 기능을 사용할게 할수 있을지 이런 거는 좀 빠져서 그 부분에 대한 질문을 하고 싶었습니다. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, this told me what your question was. Um, so, and Mark, this is relevant to you as well. So the the question was about Bluetooth technology, and not many people use it, um, and so how can we encourage that? So I have two answers. One, one is I don't know. Um, but the second is a lot, of the, a lot of the new location services don't require Bluetooth. So beacons, which Mark showed, definitely do require that the user have the Bluetooth turned on. Um, but, but in order to get... Um, but actually, even without Bluetooth being turned on, location services within your phone, and there are a number of companies, and we work with some of them, like Place IQ, there are a number of companies that are able, just based on the GPS um, within, your, within your phone, are able to track location to a really, really, uh, what's the right word? Um, uh, a granular? I don't know if you're going to be able to translate that, but um, uh, to a granular degree. So you can approximate the precision of Bluetooth without requiring Bluetooth. So again, your question was, how can we encourage people to use Bluetooth? And I guess my answer is, you might not have to. You might be able to use other ways to get, uh, to get the same effect. Thank you for your question. I thought I saw another hand. I see somebody raising their arms, but I think it just means you're bored and you're and you're tired. Uh, questions here, if somebody has the microphone, but go ahead. You can just yell it. Yeah. So actually, it's the same question in line with the, the previous one. But the thing is, like, you are advising uh, your customers, like, uh, aligning with their uh, native app. You provide uh, analytic services, right? right? But it's not your. Um, it's not the question that you can uh, directly answer to us. But uh, maybe you can advise to your customers uh, as a, a service provider. For example, the hardware services, the 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 uh, store that you share with a map. You, you know, not many customers actually download their apps, and then they they don't turn that uh, that application on. 
right? So the analytics, the captured uh, size would be very limited. Then customers would complain, okay, there are a thousand people visited us, our store today, but there are only 50 people who downloaded our app and turn it on. And then in that case, how would you advise to your uh, customers? Yeah, oh, I was gonna put it up. Um, very good question. And if I, if I understood the question, it was actually more of a comment and, and not so much of a question, but the comment was, you have all these users um, who may not use the app, who may not have any reason to use the app, and so your analytics are, are going to be weak. And I think, by the way, I, because of the light, I couldn't see, but I think you were over there. So I'm looking there, but if you're actually over here, I'm sorry. Um, the, and so your analytics are going to be incomplete because of all these people that you're not seeing in the app. And that's, that's true. So I guess I, I would have two responses. One is, I think what you're describing is, is, is the problems, the challenges that I went through at the beginning. That we have, frankly, we haven't built great app experiences for our customers as an industry. And the reason that you're not using that, cust that, that vendor's app is it's not useful for you. And so the first answer to your question is, well, we need to build better app experiences. And how do we get there? One way to get there is by constantly iterating and learning what would improve the app such that you would want to use it. The second is a little bit, um, so putting that aside, in terms of location data, and, and just kind of in terms of applications generally, I think, and this is not an Adobe um, position or a product, but I think that we are rapidly moving toward an industry where we will have apps, but if you, if you think of your, in, in Apple, it's the passbook, or in Google, or in Android, it's the wallet. Um, these are not apps, but they allow much of the same functionality. They allow tracking of the user. They allow you to push if, you're, if you have um, your product, your, something in the Apple Passbook, like I use Alaska Airlines or Delta Airlines. It will allow Delta to send me a notice that even if I don't have their app installed, just because I happen to have their... Um, their wallet or passbook, um, their card installed. I think we're go rapidly moving toward a place where we will have app-like experiences without downloading the apps. Because there are going to be many people like you, and frankly like me, that care about a brand, but not enough to want to have their app on our phone all the time. But if you think about, in increasingly, the way that we interact with apps like Facebook is not by going into the app, it's by they send us a notification, we respond to the notification, and, and so we're interacting with the notification service, not with the app itself. I think that's where apps are gonna go. And if you saw this with Amazon, they recently announced that they will, you download the Amazon app, and they are going to provide all of these other apps as a service to you. I think, especially here in, in South Korea, where you have high bandwidth, I think we may get to a point where we start streaming apps, and you won't download them at all. You'll start using them with them, them running as a service um, on the internet. But I, I, it's a very good point. The main thing for us now is we need to build better app experiences. We need to learn how to iterate toward better app experiences. But I think longer term, I'm not sure if mobile looks like it does today with apps looking like they do today. I think it will change. And I actually don't, I think I'm at time. So thank you very much.